Welcome to the webinar, Protect Your Digital Infrastructure with a Managed SASE Solution. Hi, I'm Jim Rivas. I'm CEO of Cloud Security Alliance, and I'm just delighted to be part of this like really important topic. So I think we're going to learn a lot about SASE, Security Access Service Edge, and what it is, what a lot of the business considerations are, what's new with it, and how you should be thinking about this in the context of these two organizations, NTT and Palo Alto Security, talking about the partnership they have to deliver an end-to-end -end managed SASE solution. So very excited for this topic. We are gonna give you the opportunity to ask questions as well. So with that, uh, first I'd like to introduce our two presenters. We have Nicole Scheffler, who's Director of Solutions Management for SASE at Palo Alto Network. So welcome, Nicole. And we also have uh, Kalyan Gogoi, who's Director of Architecture and AI Ops Engineering at NTT Limited. And again, uh, welcome to you, Kalyan. So why don't we why don't we dive into this and let's let's go ask questions and if I could um, Nicole ask you the the first question so so what are some of the business challenges that the viewers out there would be saying or driving the need for managed SASE in today's work environment Well thank you Jim really happy to be here excited to talk about SASE today and we want to look at three main business challenges that we see driving organizations to consider a managed SASE or a SASE solution and talk a little bit about what that is and what it means. So really happy to be here today. So the first three that we see is one, hybrid workers. You know, we're, we're kind of out of the pandemic now, but we still see this uh, trend and need for workers that are everywhere. So what we wanna make sure is that whether someone is working from home or working in a branch office, or working anywhere in the world, that they have consistent security policies, that they have the same security experience, and that really, at the end of the day, it's secure no matter where you are, right? So hybrid workers is the first. The second is kind of the move to cloud and digital. It's just the new way of doing business. It's how we do things. And so it just doesn't make sense to take the old school method of VPNing back into the data center, into headquarters where everything lives when we have a new world where we used to design for data center A and data center B, and now we're designing for data center A and cloud A and cloud B and cloud C. So this multi-cloud world and this new distribution of um, cloud apps, SaaS, uh, you know, software as a service, living in the cloud, that's driving a new need to look at not just network infrastructure, but network and the security infrastructure that go together. And then the third one is these large companies, they're going through branch transformations. That could mean modernizing the router. It could mean looking at the cost of links. It could even just be real estate consolidation. So you have to evaluate the edge because of those trends above, but also because it's just um, something that happens in the natural life cycle of technology. So why does SASE matter to all this? And I just want to level set for any of you out there who might be thinking, what is SASE? It would be a disservice for me not to just level set the way Palo Alto Networks approaches SASE, Secure Access Service Edge, with our Prisma SASE solution. So what it is, it's a unified security engine that lives in the cloud. It, it unites three components. It secures the users, the branches, and gives visibility. So you can actually allow this to be compartmentalized by security policies, taking things that we've done for years at Palo Alto Networks really well, um, securing that traffic, and all of the advanced security features that keep your users safe and your users, no matter where they are, safe. And then the network portion, getting layer seven visibility, really looking at that edge, looking at what the traffic is doing underneath. And the third piece, really having uh, something that we call here the autonomous digital experience management. But what that really means is what's happening to the user. So now that we have visibility into the user and their experience, we're able to see, okay, if Nicole's working from home and I'm not able to get on a Zoom, 
Is it because my computer is slow? Is it because I'm out on the back deck and I can't get to my wireless? Or is it something with the Zoom application? Or is it my security policy? So getting to the root cause of why users are having a bad experience is the third piece. So I want to leave you with uh, making sure you understand what the platform is, because we're going to talk about it today and talk about um, our approach in that way as a platform. And also want to point out that when we look at the market and we look at what's happening in SASE, Gartner estimates that the market of SASE is growing at an annualized rate of 36%. And that's going to reach a total market value of $15 billion by 2025, which is right around the corner. So what does that matter? It matters because it shows the need for solutions in this space. And anything we can do to make that easier to implement um, and manage is exactly why we're here. So um, I'm happy to share that. That's our platform approach. Obviously, I'm very passionate about it. We've been named the Gartner Magic Quadrant Leader in both Secure Service Edge, which is that common proxy capability to get users into their cloud apps securely, and SD-WAN. And then recently, IDC actually published the Zero Trust Network Architecture Leader Quadrant for 2023, and we're um, at the very top right there. So it's an exciting time. And that is why we're going to be talking today about the power of managed SASE. You know, if this is a platform, we really need um, to have the service and knowledge of an organization like NTT to come in and take us on that journey. Actually, 45% of enterprises, according to ESG research, indicate a preference for procuring a SASE solution from a managed service provider, which is exactly why we're here. And that will help customers get on the journey and stay on the journey. So I'm excited to talk more about that today. Thanks, Nicole. I think that's like a really good segue to bring in Callie on here and to, to talk about this. I think Nicole did a really good job of sort of in a very enthusiastic way, breaking down a lot of what SASE is and how we're bringing together network and security. We're delivering this as a scalable cloud service. And this partnership that she was alluding to is now let's bring together the managed portion of this. And so can you talk to us a little bit uh, for the, the viewers about what this partnership is, what you're delivering and how it benefits the community? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, Nicole touched upon the SASE, right? So SASE is like you know, the technology and everything, right? That brings in all the uh, the hybrid workplace, all the digital transformation that's required on the edge, right? Now, this is completely new, right? It's something that uh, would have anyway happened even uh, with the pandemic. Uh, what has happened is it's basically, you know, the transformation is happening faster. Right? So when we had a look at uh, SASE, right, from our managed services uh, standpoint, we felt that, you know, this has to be done now. Right. So that's when we started looking at the portfolio and, and uh, re refreshing it. Right. That's when we uh, had a very good uh, you know, look at uh, uh, wh where to partner. And uh, you know, the obvious place was uh, Palo Alto. Right. I mean, from what uh, uh, the exciting things that uh, Nicole was mentioning. Right. And it obviously, Palo Alto is a leader in uh, not only the SAC, but also the SD-WAN. Right? It's coming... The whole thing is coming together very well. So we uh, basically partnered with uh, uh, Palo Alto. It is a win-win uh, for both of us. Right? And uh, we have kind of you know, refreshed our managed services portfolio to bring in the SASE uh, to our customers. Right? Now, we would we know that you know the customers will basically say, okay, fine. Certain customers may say, we'll want to do ourselves. That's fine, well and good. But uh, definitely, uh, Nicole definitely said that, you know, there is this ESG research where 45% will definitely go with uh, a managed service provider. And that's where we, we come in. We bring in our years of uh, managed services experience uh, to, to the SASE world. And, and we want to, you know, take this uh, handhold our customers uh, for this uh, exciting, you know, uh, SASE journey. Great. And, and maybe uh, you can both sort of help me 
understand and help the customers understand. You know, what, what does that really mean uh, on a practical level when you combine together in this partnership to help organizations to meet a lot of those, those needs they now have in this hybrid virtual world? And, and I heard Cole mention a little bit about zero trust um, in here. How, how do we really help them together with this partnership? Maybe I'll start with you, Nicole. Yeah, well, certainly zero trust is not something that customers will go out and buy uh, because it's an approach, right? It's a, it's a mindset, just like we have in all areas of our life. And it's a way that we break everything down. And so at Palo Alto Networks, we're taking our solution and basing it off these zero trust principles and figuring out what does zero trust really look like? What's important um, to break it up. And so commonly zero trust is broken into users, infrastructure, and applications. So those are all things that we're able to secure. Now, our approach to zero trust is like a 2.0 version, right? Because instead of having um, access where you get on and you get to everything that you need, we have least privilege access. So we're trying to move away from implicit security to more identity-based security, basically give people what they need. And once they're connected in and um, have the access security policy, we also need to do two things, continuously validate that trust in case that their endpoint's been compromised or there's been a change or they've been hacked, right? So we want to continuously verify that trust. And we also want to continuously inspect that traffic right? Because once they're in um, the network, that's commonly where attacks happen anyway. So we want to constantly look at, are they who they say they are? What's going on with their traffic? And that will allow us to protect all data, all ports, all protocols, and allow us to secure all applications. So that's kind of how we're taking on zero trust. And these capabilities allow us to overcome some of the limitations of other solutions because we can give better security outcomes by taking this approach. Now, managed is nothing new. People have been, uh, customers have been managing uh, firewalls and using managed service providers for a very long time. But now we're going to take that more into this cloud modern world and just level it up to what partners in, can provide and what customers need today. So our Prisma SASE solution is built for that scale. So together with our solution that's built for the zero trust environment and the expertise mm -hmm. of a managed solution, it just allows customers to leverage that technology more quickly and transition more smoothly into this world. Great, Nicole. And Great. so... Kelly on, uh, she, she mentioned, I think, very, very well how you know, z zero trust is a network architecture out's got to be continuously verified and got to do this least privilege. Things change. It's very agile. Can you, can you maybe add to that a little bit, like from your perspective on how this really, how the, the management perspective um, portion of this really helps in that regard? Yeah, so the management, uh, so it's a good question. I mean, again, it's a question about... Uh, uh, do it yourself versus uh, manage uh, manage services, right? So it's that's an important question that every customer has to kind of uh, answer, right? But what a managed service provider will actually bring bring in is kind of the agility that uh, you know they uh, our, our customers need, right? Obviously, all our customers, all the enterprise customers, they have their own you know, core business areas. Right? As soon as they start looking at a new technology. Um, and start uh, you know managing it themselves. It, complexities arise, and you know they need to start looking at uh, you know training their people, uh, understanding this new technology, and and going forward. Right? So what we have done for that purpose, we have basically done a very very deep integration towards uh, the uh, Palo Alto uh, SASE platform, and we have done it. Uh, and we we call it uh, we call the managed services uh, platform. Uh, as Tektra, right? We have done API integrations into it, deep API integrations. That is one thing, right? So with, so with that, we have all the layers, right? The observability, the AI layer, the incident management automation for the um, the operations of it, right? Is kind of well integrated, right? And uh, beyond that, what we have also done is, you know, invested very heavily in uh, going and training our people right to 
understand the technology and we have a huge uh, set of uh, engineers who really will be able to operate that network from a initial uh, standing it up and also going forward to making it uh, you know operational on a day-to-day -day basis right so that's what we have done and also the well, we, we have also done another thing which is upgrading our uh, the idle processes to basically align to this new world of sassy great Th thanks galleon and so I have um, I have one thing to add too, Jim, because when we think about it, we've talked about how SASE is network and security, right? We're talking about managed. Another piece that NTT can do is simply bring those teams together, <laughs> bring the expertise of the network team and the security team together, because traditionally these are owned and operated in, in some silos in most businesses or embedded in sub teams. So I think there's some value there in having a partner like NTT come in that has expertise on both sides of the fence. So regardless of where the organization's at or how they're tackling that, they could take all those parties into one system and really make sure it's doing the right thing for the business, which is an important add. Yeah, I, I think that we see that a lot. And a lot of times there's in heavily regulated industries, you do see a lot of that segmentation still with the network people and the security people, risk management audit. So it's it's very important. And it sounds like, Callahan, that, that, that you provide a platform that they can do that in collaboration that where the, the organization can collaborate, but also then share and collaborate with your experts as well. Is that how you would position this? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, good point that <clears throat> Nicole brought in. It's, uh, you know, we, we do have a very uh, rich history and expertise on both the networking as well as the security side. Now bring them together along with uh, a partner like uh, a Palo Alto is kind of, uh, kind of making it, uh, kind of, I, again, to quote the obvious, one plus one equals yep. three, right? But I would say it's much, much more than that. Right. Um, so, so Nicole, digging in a little bit more and, you know, this the, the evolution on how we've sort of looked at this and, and how SASE is sort of like incorporated SD WAN. We are we we see obviously a lot of organizations that they're adopting that. They they're they're looking to improve that, in, embed the security in, and also just be more efficient in their use of, of bandwidth and everything else. So, how from like your perspective in this partnership, do you address that that increased adoption um, for SD WAN into their their security infrastructure? Absolutely, Jim. We see organizations are now adopting SD-WAN for a few reasons. Better performance, improved security posture, cost containment. So that's where, again, the power of managed is why we're here, because NTT is like a design authority for not just the best routing and optimization of packet flow, uh, bits and bytes, but also making sure that the security is at the right place at the right time. So our SD-WAN on the solution side does work a little bit differently. Sometimes we refer, refer to it as next-gen SD-WAN because we're beyond the layer three or four. We're working at layer seven at the application layer. That allows us to offer load balancing, path optimization at a session level rather than a packet level. So that's going to give us, again, because we're looking at the application level, end-to-end -end visibility across the entire um, end-to-end -end network, right? And we also are able to leverage AI and machine learning to automate different pieces of service management, which uh, Kalyan alluded to as well before, is that's part of our um, automation, not just in the SD-WAN product, but in our managed solution on top of that. That allows us to isolate faults easier, remediate better, and just give an improved user experience. So the solution is taking care of those things, uh, which is really nerdy, but exciting to me because uh, I'm a true network nerd here, uh, tried and true. But what does this mean to the businesses? So enterprises at all sizes are able to use this technology to help them integrate and adopt cloud and SaaS applications easier and faster because they're able to see the policies. They can also leverage broadband internet alongside or even replace their MPLS links, which can oftentimes result in a lot of cost savings. 
We can also integrate this into some of the omni-channel experiences into the remote or branch environments. Um, again, leveraging those rich APIs and eliminating the network complexity and taking advantage of business-oriented policies. What is the app ID? Well, that makes sense. It's what app we're using. What's the user ID? Okay, great. What's the device ID? And so when we start to make policies on that, it just becomes easier for the users to be cons secure and the users to be confident that they're able to get to what they need when they want, while also keeping the data and the devices and the organization safe. And that's going to give us increased visibility um, and just lower operational costs. So there's a lot of solution advantages and business advantages. And that was kind of the SD-WAN side, but that's um, really all of our Prisma SASE value is in that. So, so Kalyan, um, what Nicole described in how we're trying to, to really modernize here with SD-WAN, and, and certainly I, I think a lot of like architects out there, they're, they're pretty familiar with what she articulated. Well, what are you trying to do to like really, you know, fill in what you see as like the market gaps in how you deliver this to the customer? What could you add to what Nicole had said? Yeah, so the uh, the important aspect that uh, that I think we didn't talk about, right? So there is, so we with the SASE, the edge and the access gets controlled. I mean, that is also sorted, right? Now, uh, the enterprises definitely is our, will definitely be having a LAN, definitely be having a, a W LAN, right? And because these are kind of key aspects, right? Now, traditionally, again, we have been very, very uh, strong in that in those areas as well to manage those networks. Now, what the added uh, uh, management or the managed SASE, right? And with, within the same platform and within the same service, right? So it, it allows us to be able to do the LAN, the WAN, the uh, the SASE plus the security aspects into a single, uh, you know, a framework, right, and a single service, and uh, almost going into the mythical single pane of glass, right? I wouldn't uh, term it as a single pane of glass, but from a service point of view, it would be like that, right? So that's what we would bring into this particular uh, thing, right? kind of. Having a unified view across, right? Doing a service management across all these layers, and you know, doing it in a unified way, right? Being able to troubleshoot and get the network up and running as uh, as much as possible to be up and running, and do, uh, and solving these um, issues fast. So I want to remind the, the the viewers if you've got questions for these experts to to go ahead and think about them, start submitting them. We'll try to take a few at at the end. Um, so, Nicole, uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time just talking to all sorts of companies, all sorts of enterprises. And, you know, there's there's a feeling we're all sort of unique and, and they are and they're all different points in their journey. And they they still have a lot of things in their existing data centers. They still may have uh, some traditional legacy VPNs, just everyone says, hey, I'm unique. And so can you maybe talk through like just that sort of laundry list of what are the sort of use cases that you're looking to address so that those organizations kind of map this to their own environments? Yeah, absolutely. We had a couple use cases we talked at the beginning of the broadcast, right? And we could look at it as end-to-end -end network transformation, which is an ongoing journey <laughs> that we all take uh, over time, right? The network security transformation, the branch or hybrid workers. But let's double click just into a few of the key use cases to understand like, okay, those are great buzzwords, but what is a v what do we really need to think about for VPN replacement, for example? Well, in that case, uh, VPN is not designed for the scale and high performance and consistent delivery of some of these advanced securing, security services that are required to securely connect the hybrid workforce to those applications, like I said, here and there and in the multi-cloud. So replacing those legacy VPN technologies comes with the need to approach zero trust differently, as I talked about before. And that can help organizations overcome performance bottlenecks, simplify management, and save them money. So you can't just say, oh, I just need this new firewall. Here's our old VPN. Here's what we need to replace it with because it just 
It doesn't work like that anymore. Another use case I want to talk more about, I'm going to talk through three more of these high level, right, is securing internet access. So obviously the mobile workforce, we talked about it. It's just hard to protect these remote users. And these are remote users who could be sharing internet with their kids' YouTube. They could be at a coffee shop. There's more threat vectors there because these users are out in the wild per se. So we want to make sure that the cloud secure web gateway capabilities that are built into Prisma SASE remove these latency issues while also improving security capabilities. So we want them to get what they need fast, but also securely. So that's really important to address the hybrid users, right? Another use case to look for and, and understand is advanced software as a service SaaS security. So this is usually in the cloud access security broker or CASB area and enterprise using enterprises that are using some of these legacy CASB solutions. um, They can't keep up with the rapid growth of SaaS applications and shadow IT is real. And especially in larger organizations, again, having this managed partner come in and really look at everything that's happening in the business and the ubiquitous growth of data and the increasing number of workers, like this perfect storm, it calls for some type of next gen CASB capabilities, which is built into our Prisma SASE platform to ensure that complete coverage, secure all your applications, whether you're on prem or in the cloud. And in that way, organizations can get full visibility of any type of shadow IT, what applications are tolerated, what's supposed to be sanctioned and unsanctioned and make it easy to use so that they can safely enable those SaaS applications. Then we even have things built in for best practices and and compliance, right? And then the last one is just that branch transformation. So fundamentally changing the number of branches, lots of decisions going on there, which we spoke about before, but using them as collaboration hubs instead of places for work, turning them into a place where you could collaborate and get things done Um, And you look at retailers and they're changing the way that they're engaging with customers in store and things like that by industry is another lens that NTT expertise can put on top of the solution to make sure that they're getting um, specific industry needs addressed as well. And that branch transformation trend is really driving WAN transformation. And that's where we see, again, some of that legacy MPLS moving to SD-WAN or SASE. So you'll see that our joint offers address a lot um, of these things with our technology, but the key is to figure out what's the most beneficial thing for you to do now and just um, start small and really work to have a roadmap of where you're at and where you want to go so that you can get um, the best uh, use case solved for right now and just continue to make it more secure each day. So, so um, Kalyan, Nicole talked about from, you know, getting from where where you're at, to where you want to go and, and describe these different use cases. Can you talk a little bit about what is what does that journey look like when the the enterprise is saying, here I'm at, I want to become like world class in terms of my SASE uh, s- solution that I have and how it operates in my organization. What is that that journey, consultative, whatever it looks like? Yeah, so um, all these exciting use cases that uh, Nicole was mentioning, right, they do require a lot of these, uh, you know, first of all, you need to go and consult, right? basically have a look at what it really means for, for an enterprise. Right? So you will need to go and consult, you need to go and design and then build it and then finally operate it and optimize it, right? So, and for these, uh, it's a complete life cycle that you need to basically engage the uh, the enterprise on, right? And I think we as an entity, right? We do have the capability across all these areas right? and we would be able to bring that to our customers and handhold them to basically, you know, go along this whole uh, SASE uh, journey. Right? And I think it is almost, uh, in a way, it's absolutely important that these uh, enterprises they start on this journey now, then do it later because it's becoming so important with all these, uh, you know, the security vectors increasing and the attack surfaces increasing. Yeah. So, so Nicole, what what's your perspective on for the the customer side on you've you've you said you're a nerd and I'm asking you to channel your your 
inner nerdiness, but also the, the business side of it. What are some things that you would have in terms of like practical advice for customers on this journey on things they can be doing to, to, to make this more successful? Yeah, I mean, the technology is only as good as it's configured. So, you know, security, I've always seen it. Um, I do music and DJing. So I always think about like the soundboard, right? It's capable of a lot of things. There's a lot of knobs, <laughs> but knowing the exact uh, adjustment of bass and volume and, and blending is very similar to what our SASE platform could do. You're looking at it and it's got a lot of knobs. So you want to make sure you're using expertise just like I would watch a YouTube video or figure out how to hack learning that uh, faster. That is, is a good analogy, a little bit cheesy, to, but to what NTT can do because they understand all of the different knobs and they can mix together network and security in great ways. So from a solution standpoint, we are at an interesting time, I would say for tech talent. And so there is talent turnover where you might lose um, your head uh, guy or gal for a certain technology area. Um, things are changing. So uh, an integrator like NTT can work across those so that customers can benefit and break down into what they really need and know what knobs they really need to turn, right, for the, for the best remix. <laughs> um, in addition, there's integrations, right? leveraging those um, in their business and, and not just, it's not just network security because you're bringing on O365 or you're bringing in collaboration or you're layering on top of that. So it's really just how can we um, get to a point where the network and security is handled and the organization itself can accelerate the shift to O365 or the um, speed of a merger and acquisition, like all the things that happen in business, it allows the network and security portion to be handled and taken care of with experts that are going to ask the right questions and look at the cycle that Kalyan just presented, right? We also have this automation of APIs uh, that we're working with NTT, and that's where they're really putting in some secret sauce to figure out what are some tasks that we could just automate and how can we integrate with what the customer needs? And that will improve their operations. And that's really where they bring together the people, process, and technology uh, that we know and love into the client journey. So it's just really that advisor to go with you along the way and make sure that um, you know everything uh, sounds good. <laughs> Great. Appreciate that. And uh, we're going to need to wrap up here shortly and get to the, the customer uh, questions. But I want to just give you both just sort of a final opportunity you know, you're very passionate about what you're doing in your organizations why why this partnership makes sense for for customer sassy so nicole anything additional you want to add and then i'll go to Callion. well obviously i'm passionate and excited you know in the industry watching everything ebb and flow being um designing and being a part of so many network projects and also being on the ground floor and watching security evolve over time. This is exciting that this is a unified solution. It's just going to change the way that we look at operations and change the way that customers, um, IT shops experience network and security, so, ex you know, growth, um, incidents, and respond better. So this is going to be this rise and manage. It's going to come with some uh, vendor consolidation as well. And that's really going to take uh, the Swiss army knife and put it into one knife. And the most exciting part about that is that when we do consolidate some of these point products that are all in our security solution, we're able to have visibility in one data lake. So once we have the data from what's happening in DNS, what's happening in CASB, what's happening for URL, what's happening on the network, all of these data points are in one data lake instead of in all these separate vendors. So that's gonna allow us to, to do more, right? To do more with automation and AI, because you can't um, do that as easily when you're not looking at a unified uh, security solution in the cloud so it can scale as our customer base needs, and it allows us to layer in innovation. You're going to see just more and more things being poured into how we attach um, security into business. So Kalyan, I know that you could share as well why you're excited, but I think it's not just the solution. It's these partnerships. It's the integrators that allow everything to come to life for our customers. Yeah, final thoughts. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Nicole. I think 
it's just to wind it up, right? I mean, uh, the word unified is something that uh, you know Nicole stressed upon, and even I would want to stress upon that unified. And uh, a lot of things that we do on a day to day basis, working with uh, uh, with Palo Alto, right, is you know have a very deeper integration into uh, the, the both the platforms together. Right? And what what has happened is you know we are able to get uh, the APIs at, mu at a much much faster rate. Right in the tech preview stage, uh, we integrate, you know, at the com for the with a full complete life cycle, right? And with that, I think we are, you know, in a prime position to get this whole uh, you know, solution, the SASE managed SASE solution, out to the customers, and we're very very excited about it. All right. Well, th thanks, Kalyan, for for your words of wisdom on this partnership. I wanted to go to uh, an audience question. So the, the question, I'll paraphrase it just a little bit. And I think you sort of mentioned, you know, 45% are saying that, you know, they're looking for managed solution here. So the, the audience question is, they're sort of in this, in this middle point of analysis of does it make sense to do managed services or not versus what, what they have internally. So what, what would be, I'll start with you, Kalyan, and what would be the, the argument for doing that for your perspective from an organization who's maybe kind of in that middle, not quite sure? Yeah, I mean, 45% is a number that ESG has uh, given. Right? And I believe right, with any new technology like SASE, uh, right, evolution, this typically the numbers are usually higher than that, right? I mean, and um, the, uh, for, this kind of a solution, right? What will happen is if a managed service provider comes in and you know does it for does the uh, complete uh, you know lifecycle management of the whole uh, solution, the enterprise would be able to you know focus on their core. Right? Let's say I have a enterprise that is doing some totally different uh, business. Right? Why should the person? Why should the enterprise be looking at trying to understand what SaaS is, how to make the transformation, and so on and so forth? So we take the pain away right? and we will kind of give a complete uh, you know, life cycle management of the whole uh, solution. And that's what mm -hmm. I think would be the way forward, right? 45%, 45 again, I say it's a number. Mm -hmm. I believe it's going to be more. Okay. Anything to add to that, Nicole? I just think there's one thing I'll add, and it's just the velocity of transformation, right? Just being able to do more faster, that's what they're going to do for customers. Again, back to what Kalyan said and allow them to focus on their innovation, their profitability without worrying about um, securing and getting their network traffic uh, online and access to what they need. So I think it just comes to velocity and having that trusted partner who will manage and offload that for you so that customers can make the most of the platform as soon as possible. Right. And, and I think I'm going to stick with you, Nicole, for the, the next question. This is a question I think I've been getting for 30 years in different contexts in cybersecurity. But, um, you know, when when making some decisions about this, you know, SASE is something we're talking about unifying a lot of things. What what do you what do we think about in terms of like best of breed and and what that means versus having a platform for something like this? Can you kind of go through like thinking through that? Yeah, it's it's quite a, a tech religious mm -hmm. debate. So I'm sure we could spend a whole topic and a whole hour on that. But let me make some highlights, right? Because again, being in industry for so long, I get it, right? There was a reason why we would diversify into best of breed, but with that comes RFPs, ELA, ELA agreements. What are you getting? And you really have to trade off and look at what do I get when this is separate in distinct functions versus what's integrated? And that's going to look different for every company um, across the board because they're going to have different business drivers and needs for why they need this one off or why this may be one off. But consolidation is still there. The value of consolidation is there. So when we take this approach, we go to one console. It's what I talked about before, having one data lake, um, just to be able to act on that data better, simplify the process, not only the buying process of the time with all of those separate vendors, but you do get that view of everything. And then you get that operational efficiency because you could tighten it, right? Uh, for example, our solution does everything in line. So you're getting efficacy, speed, and security all in one. 
But I think it really, when you look at a platform, comes down to two main things, visibility and optimization. The visibility comes from the data lake. And so instead of talking in terms of we get one data lake, we could talk about it in terms of we get visibility now into everything. It's not sitting in a manager for this product here and then a manager from this product here. It's one thing to manage those in all those separate environments, but think it of traffic flow to take the traffic and put it into this system and put it into this system. So the visibility is the one. And then the optimization, just being able to look at everything and say, okay, based on all this, we can turn these um, different settings. We can tighten these security policies. And it doesn't have to be either or, but with scaling and talent and just the capabilities that we have today in one platform, that's why we're here. That's why we're excited about it because it's just a new day for everything to come together. And, and way. you're guaranteeing that I'm never going to get that question again about best of breed versus. <laughs> <laughs> so let me yeah, we'll see what well. it looks like. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Let me jump in as well. I just want to put my views there as well. I think you will definitely be getting that question over and over again for the next how many ever years. Right. Um, the be especially being in the, you know, seen how uh, you know multi vendors things involved right and in this context of sasi uh, the sac and the sd wan right they're very close together and now if we if we go in if a customer says i will go with the best and best of breed right and you me as entity as a um, kind of a um, managed service provider says okay fine let's let me go and integrate it I would require a lot of effort to go and start integrating the, these uh, functions together, right? And uh, finally, the customer will say, I, I want the same kind of visibility that, uh, let's say, an uh, integral solution like uh, Prisma SaaS is providing. Then I, I would need to get all the data together, somehow start getting all these things, uh, you know, into some data lake and start correlating them together and giving the visibility. Not impossible, doable, it'll take time. Right. So that that's, uh, you know, um, a thing that will happen. Right? And there's one more additional point that I just want to make. Right? It's like a, a best of breed when you say best of breed. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of SSC and SD man, I think uh, Palo Alto is already best of breed in both. Right? So in a way, a pre-integrated best of breed is better, be better. Right. Along with a pre-integrated managed services is even be better. And right? so as the three functions together, a SASE, pre-integrated SSC and SD-WAN, plus a managed service together with the uh, SSC. Great, great, I appreciate that. And I, I wanna see if we can just squeeze in one more question, because I think it's a, it's a really good one. So, you know, we had the, the White House issue, the executive order around zero trust. It's been a little over two years and the customer is saying that they have a, a zero trust uh, strategic requirement and to demonstrate this within the organization. So how is what you are doing? Uh, how does that help that organization? Maybe I can start with you, Kelly, on it. Nicole, finish. Would she like to weigh in? How about Nicole, you take this okay. question? And I'll, I'll yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's two aspects of it. One being compliant which is absolutely possible with, again, that centralized view, that unified policy and management. So let's break it down, right? Zero trust, we talked about it before, users, infrastructure, and applications. So we have a framework now, solution and expertise, that allow us to really say who, what, when, where, why, how, right? And take action on that. So we can say this department, the finance department, wants to access Salesforce during business hours and that's SaaS in the cloud and why are they doing that because it's part of their job and how are they do how are we inspecting that traffic well we need to decrypt that and inspect that for threats and we're going to allow them access to that so what you want to do is look at all the different enforcement points there is still going to be a need for next gen firewalls somewhere we still have different um, design considerations that are part of the process of working with NTT that we highlighted before, but you want all of these things to come together, next gen firewall, SASE, endpoint security. And so when we look at zero trust and achieving it, that is one way that we get the policies right for all those areas, but we're also using AI ops 
to look at the best practices when we look at compliance. So we know what NIST is. We know at Palo Alto Networks what the policies are, and we know what the customer has in the system. So our platform actually uses AI operations for things like assessing the best practices and saying, your security figuration here has an allow all, that is not gonna allow you to be compliant. So we actually embed that into the managed offer to inform, notify, and course correct for our customers. And that's where you close the full loop because the system is telling you these things. But if there's not a person owning that in the system, when we look at DIY, doing it yourself, if they're not able to look at it, you could take that away and put a managed solution in place where they're saying, okay, we could have a policy review and make sure that you're compliant across all areas while also achieving zero trust. So it's like a two for one, right? It's on one hand that we're able to achieve uh, zero trust by eliminating implicit trust and continuously verifying the security on, and inspecting that traffic on all ports and all protocols, but also marrying that with the expertise of a managed solution so that you can get to where you want to be faster. Yeah. So to I don't know if you want to add to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, add to that, right? I mean, uh, the uh, just going back, maybe a couple of questions, uh, right? Uh, Nicole mentioned that, you know, the platform, the SASE platform is, is basically a platform and right? you can do whatever you want, right? And there'll be lots and lots of knobs there, right? So that's where I think um, our uh, expertise will come in. Right? That's one, right? Which we, we have the expertise basically going and configuring the right policies uh, across the board, and and at every uh, you know point endpoint these securities get enforced, right? That's one. Second thing is what we have basically been uh, basically done is on the the AI uh, part, right? Where all these uh, you know actions are these uh, assessments are kind of done right we are in, we have integrated that into the managed services platform itself and right? so where automatically we get notifications saying hey there is an issue at this particular area of your network can you please go and have a look at it or if even if possible you know go and remediate it immediately without any uh, issue uh, without any notification to anywhere right so mm -hmm. that's that's kind of integration that we have uh, kind of uh, done with this deep uh, with the managed services along with uh, the uh, Prisma SASE. Well, well th thanks for that, Kalyan. And, and thanks, Nicole, again. I mean, the, the excitement the two of you have is very palpable. And so it's been a great conversation. And sorry, we could not get to all of the questions, but just want to assure everyone that some member of our crack staff will follow up and make sure you get your questions answered. So um, just to let let you know that there are some some things you can go follow up on. You can actually sign up for a network assessment and you can follow the link there. And then there's also a link where you can just learn more specifics, more details about this managed program and this partnership between NTT and Palo Alto Networks. And, and we talked about a lot of different things with SASE and the, the ESG study. So you can find in the resource area a lot of places to where you can download a lot of that information. So thank you for joining us for this webinar.